Back in the 1980s, rookie card mania hit the hobby hard. You can blame Mickey Mantle and Pete Rose and Don Mattingly and Jose Conseco. Those dudes and a bunch of others caught collectors' attentions just as baseball cars started to go mainstream, and everyone had to get their hands on those first-year pasteboards. Prices went up, 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 and card companies noticed. Donruss brought us rated rookies. Fleer brought us major league prospects. And Topps brought us future stars and rookie stars. And there were traded sets, update sets, the rookie sets, box sets devoted to rookies and prospects. Rookie cards were everywhere. And every player was a prospect, a guy who might turn into the next somebody, a rookie card waiting to explode. So you had people investing in up-and-comers like Tim Piznarski, Tom Dunbar, Joe Hezketh, Randy Kramer. If there was any chance you could see a major league field within the next five years, someone was going to give you a rookie card, and collectors were going to stock up on you. But even then, there were guys who snuck up on all of us, guys like Jose Mesa. The future Indians closer began his professional baseball life when the Toronto Blue Jays signed him to an amateur free agent contract out of the Dominican Republic in 1981, when he was just 15 years old. Fifteen. Joe Table spent six long years in the Jays minor league system, working almost exclusively as a starter and topping out at Double A Knoxville in 1987. That summer, though, the Blue Jays were fighting for an American League East title, and they traded Oswaldo Peraza and a player to be named later to the Baltimore Orioles in exchange for starter Mike Flanagan. In September, the clubs agreed on the player to be named later, Juan Jose Mesa. While the Blue Jays fell short of their playoff aspirations, the Orioles pretty much fell short of being a major league team, finishing the season 67-95. and 95. Why not bring up their new youngster? So they did, and Mesa made his big league debut on September 10, 1987. He logged six total appearances that month, five starts and a relief stint, and crafted a nifty 1-3 record with a tidy 6.05 ERA. Normally, such a stout showing would have led to an avalanche of rookie cards, but only Donruss bid on Mesa as an Oriole for their 1988 set. As you can see on this card, Mesa himself did not seem all that impressed by the meager outpour of cardboard respect, and collectors pretty much felt the same way. I'm sure you don't remember anyone holding thousands of Mesa rookie cards with their sights set on early retirement. Do you? The Orioles themselves didn't help build any Mesa hype either, sending him back to the minors in 1988. That worked out well for them, seeing how they finished at 54 and 107 after a historic 21-game losing streak to start the season. Having Mesa on hand would have been so much worse, right? Apparently, because the O's kept him down on the farm until the last month of 1990 when he came up for good. And it wasn't until the next year, 1991, that Upper Deck and Bowman finally gave that 1988 Donruss Jose Mesa rookie cards and company. It wasn't until the O's traded Mesa to the Cleveland Indians, though, and until the tribe moved him to the bullpen, that any of his cardboard really mattered. By that time, you probably had to trudge through some dusty common spends to find Mesa's true rookie card. Like our video? Then like our videos and subscribe to our channel, WaxPackGods.com.